welcome to worship at First Baptist Church, Brantford. This is Pentecost Sunday. Our focus is on the biblical story in Acts, in which God's spirit, God's presence with us, encounters ordinary human beings and wonderful and unexpected things begin to happen. Through the empowerment of the spirit, the disciples were energized to proclaim the good news of God's love through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you to those participating in our worship service, Nancy Bullivant, our Minister of Music, Terry Dempsey, our reader, and Robbie Nagel, assisting us with streaming. Thank you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A rushing wind and tongues as of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers healing and hope to all people. Amen. Our scripture comes from the book of Acts. It's Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, people of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. Amen.
This is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is the birthday of the church, but it was an important Jewish festival before it became a Christian one. Pentecost was one of three pilgrimage festivals that were ideally spent in Jerusalem, and it occurred 50 days after the Passover, which commemorated Israel's liberation from Egyptian slavery. Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, tells us that Jesus' disciples and others were gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. The risen Christ had told them to go there and wait to be clothed with power from on high that would then make them witnesses to him throughout the world. As the disciples were gathered there, celebrating Pentecost, suddenly the Spirit came upon them, accompanied by a dramatic sound like the rush of a violent wind, and tongues as of fire flickered around them until one flame hovered over the head of each disciple. Then the disciples began speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Some who were outside the house heard the commotion and gathered near. They wondered aloud at this strange phenomena. They could not understand how these Galileans were speaking languages that the Jews, no matter where they had come from and what language they spoke, could understand. All the barriers came down. The Spirit came upon the disciples and allowed them to speak so that all could understand and be understood. We are told that 3,000 persons joined the church that day. We often talk about the church as God's people and followers of Jesus, but the church is also the dwelling place of God's Spirit. Beginning on this day of Pentecost, God's own Spirit came to indwell, unite, energize and send forth the new people of God, the church. Peter explained the miracle of the languages as the fulfillment of God's promise to send the Holy Spirit, as spoken through the prophet Joel. Peter was sure that this event of wind and flame meant that the new day of God's reign had begun. The reference to the disciples speaking in various languages is an allusion to a reconciled humanity. It is the beginning of the reunification of humanity, the creation of a new kind of community, which became the church. And a once timid, frightened, and discouraged group of Jesus' followers became the forceful, confident, and unified advocates for their experience of the risen Christ. And a new faith movement and community was born. What is envisioned is a world community, one that stretches to the ends of the earth with all its national, creedal, racial, and geographical polarities embraced by the love of Christ and forged by the Spirit into a single mutually encouraging community. Here proclaimed are the universal possibilities for a torn and fragmented world that is finally healed by love. This vision of a worldwide community draws us into the realm of biblical promise. The roots of our identity as Christians, the cornerstone of our existence, rest on the hope that the reign of God has begun and will be fulfilled. We Christians cherish the living legacy of the prophets because they envision a new future 
amid fierce and frequently despairing and unjust circumstances. The prophet Joel spoke words of promise and hope to a farming community devastated by drought, crops shrunken and burned, and even worse, a land plagued by locusts, devouring, mutilating, ravaging everything in their fierce and frenzied invasion. In the midst of this, Joel spoke of a future of hope, hope against hope. Peter used Joel's words to remind his listeners of a startling new future where the dissonance of the human race will become the unity of the human family. It is a future that will be built brick by brick, step by step, by God's spirit-filled people. A future built by perseverance, by tenacity, and by faithfulness. Friends, let us not grow discouraged about making a difference in our world. Let us engage the world with confidence that God's Spirit is upon us. Let us engage the world with enthusiasm, speaking and acting joyfully, so that others will recognize the hope that is in Christ. And may God's Spirit pour out on each of us, young and old, male and female, that we may see visions, dream dreams, and live lives recreated as God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather this day to celebrate your goodness and love. Thank you for your presence in our church and in our lives. We are your children, never forgotten, never deserted, always forgiven, always loved. On the day of Pentecost, your spirit fell like tongues of fire. It filled those who were empty it empowered those who were weary. It brought together those who were divided. It reassured those who were afraid. By its power, we can walk together as one. By its power, we can find strength to share. Give us visions and dreams of what you long for in your creation, that we might begin to live them into reality Fill us with your wind and fire, that we might be enlivened again. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve in Christ's church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission, and to learn from this time when we have had to do things differently in worship and pastoral care. Open our hearts to connect with those for whom the time, this time of physical distancing has been difficult. Open our hands to share in the tasks that need doing and open our lips in prayer and praise. We pray for the leaders of our nation and all nations of the world that they might be guided with wisdom and understanding and committed to act in ways that bring your presence and peace. We pray for all places where there are wars and rumors of war, for those places where hunger gnaws, for those places ruled by oppression and injustice, where hatred overcomes love. We pray for all who are ill, whether in body, mind, or spirit, and we pray for all who mourn. Spirit of God, bring healing for all who face pain, discouragement or disappointment made so much keener because of isolation during this time of COVID-19. We remember all who have lost employment, those who face stress, stress and pressure as they try to rebuild their lives. Fill them with your spirit of compassion and strength and healing, that they might know that they are never alone. 
We remember those whose dreams and visions have died. Renew their spirits with your passionate fire. O oh God, your spirit fell like tongues of fire. Fall on us too. Make us Pentecost people who reach out in love and caring. For all that you have given and will yet give, we give you great thanks. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the grace of God be with you all. Amen.